The topic of uh, my message today, it's called when you are not understood. I believe that we're all looking, we, wa we all want to be, we desire to be understood by, by, by everybody. Uh, and sometimes we're misunderstood among our friends, family, uh, neighbors, uh, business, church. And uh, this story of Hannah gives us very valuable lessons, I believe, very good lessons. And uh, a quick n side note that all of my kids, they, are, they all have biblical names. And behind every name, there is a deep Bible story. And this is one of the reasons why I named my middle child Anna. It has to do with this story. What I admire about Hannah is her character, her attitude, her reaction to different challenges in life that she was going through. So let me read you the story from 1 Samuel chapter 1. And uh, let's go and read together. So her rival provoked her severely to make her miserable. She provoked her intentionally because the Lord has closed her womb. So it was year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord that, that she provoked her. Therefore, Hannah, she cried, she wept, and she did not eat. Then Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why are you crying? Why are you, why are you not eating? Why is this your heart? Uh, why is your heart grieved? Am I not better to you than ten sons? Then from verse 14. Then Hannah, she was still looking for help. She was misunderstood and she went to the temple. And she started praying. She opened her heart and Eli, who was the priest back then, he said to her, How long will you be drunk? Put your wine away. From you but Hannah answered no my Lord I'm a woman of sorrowful spirit I have drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink but I have poured out my soul my heart before the Lord in this story a very well-known story we know that Hannah she wanted a child and she couldn't get a child for a very long time. Back in the back in the days, in this historical context, it was very uh, how should I say it? Uh, people would put you down if you don't have kids. And I'm sure she went through a lot of challenges among people. And first challenge that she had to put up with every day on a daily basis, she was misunderstood by people by people that surrounded her on a daily basis possibly her neighbors possibly every time she would go to baby shower every time mother's day would go would come around she would feel miserable she would feel intimidated by describing how she felt i believe bible it's not by incident that bible the word of god uses such de gives us such details how she felt for example bitterness of her soul she uh was grieving she was going through sorrow other translation says she was ang she was going through anguish it's not just, well, I, I'm not in a good mood. I'm just, uh, I, I'm, I don't like this. I have a problem. It's, mu it's much, much deeper problem that she was going and caring year after year. It had to do with her soul, her heart, people that surrounded her. And interesting, Bible gives us even details how hard it was for her to deal with that some people provoked her. Often we complain to God or to other people without even anyone provoking us. But in this case, she had someone very close who provoked her. Can you imagine how excited she was when she had to go home? And sometimes possibly she didn't, she didn't even want to go home. But <laughs> that's, that's, you see, that's my journey. I have to go home and I don't even want to be there around, surrounded by these people. And the Bible says that she, um, that it, it was year after year so her misery it was not just a one week long journey and she had to she had to deal with this miserable with this sorrow 
for many years. Second, mis second point, she was misunderstood by family. I think we all went uh, through uh, point number one. Next slide. When we're misunderstood by people, I, I'm sure you have experienced that in your life even though you're young. But when you are misunderstood in your family, that's another level. And uh, we know back in that days in the historical context, you know, another wife. So she had to, I'm sure, see her every day. So she would put her down. She would make fun of her. The Bible says she provoked her. And then husband, he steps in and he tries to maybe help her out somehow and he's asking her hey Hannah why are you crying why are you so miserable and then she pauses what you asking you don't know and you don't know why you are the one who's suppo supposed to know you're the cl how come you uh, again you know like again you know you, uh, like whatever I was just asking, you know, why are you crying? Yeah, I, you know, every time you're asking, and sometimes, you know, even the good intention, the question that uh, might not be appropriate or the timing maybe is not good, even though his motive was maybe good behind, behind, behind the question. But it doesn't help her. It doesn't help her much. And then he's, <laughs> he came up with a better idea. You know, Hannah, you know what? You're crying. You have a problem. I know you. I see you're very emotional. Here we go. Are you ready? I have a solution. I'm your best gift. I don't know if she wanted to slap him, you know, at this moment or what she wanted to do. But he, yeah, he came up with the best solution. I'm your best gift. You know, I'm, the Bible says he told her I'm better than 10 sons. So once again, we're not going to go deeper, but I think she felt misunderstood even in her family, in her marriage. So she already went through two levels of mis being misunderstood. And here we go. Where do we go next? What do we do next? Praise God, she was a believer. She knew God. So next step, she goes to church. She goes to the temple. That's what the Bible tells us. And she prays to her God. And then, you know, she prays, you know, she's quiet and she's... Um, uh, miserable and um, as she she pours her heart I am not, I, I, I'm not I'm not sure what she felt inside but as soon as she heard this how long will you be drunk imagine how miserable she she is already she's already miserable crash crashed and the priest, the pastor, the church, he did not evaluate her situation. He accused her. He blamed her. Where? In church? My pastor? The spiritual guy? Here we go again. What do, we, what do I do? Where do I go next? I have been everywhere. I have been... And I am misunderstood in church. The holiest place. This is the, my last resort. Where I was hoping, looking for help. And now I am misunderstood in my church. What do I do next? Next slide. She was so grieved. She was so grieved. She went through the three levels misunderstood by people misunderstood by family and once once you're misunderstood in church i think you feel so depressed you're so desperate you don't know where to go next you are mad at everybody you are destroyed inside and that's the context that she was dealing with I would like to apologize on behalf of all pastors and priests and churches. If you were hurt by any priest, pastor, or church in the past, please forgive us. Forgive them. They, we are humans. If you, are, if, you are, if you were ever blessed by someone in your life, most often it's because God, He used that person. 
He sent that person into your life, right timing, right person. And God, he spoke through that person. And he was a huge support, a big blessing to you. But then the following week, month, year, you might be so disappointed in people. And then you don't know your lust. You don't know what to do next. You don't know how to deal with that. And that's what she was dealing with. I don't know how you guys react when you come to church and you, and you hear uh, gossip about you. When you hear, when you see someone is judging you. When you expected something from your pastor and you didn't get it. You didn't get the help you were hoping for. What do you do? How do you react? And here we go, Hannah's reaction. Now let's go to the deeper message. Everyone claims that I have my own opinion. We all think that we have opinions. We all have different opinions. But please let me interrupt you and try to show you that it's not really your opinion. Your opinion that you call that it's your personal opinion, by the way, it was given to you by someone. Your opinion was formed because of something or someone. Because of you were under influence of something or someone. And we live in such world that something always has influence over us. Sometimes it's news. Sometimes it's life circumstances. Sometimes it's friends, people, your environment, healthy or toxic environment. Sometimes it's money. Sometimes it's God. Sometimes it's evil forces. Sometimes it's hardships. They all have influence over us. And behind all that, pay attention, a spiritual world stands behind every thought. Keep that thought. Let me ask you a question. When Adam was in the Garden of Eden, he was the happiest man on earth. Can you imagine? Think about it. In the perfect world created by God, he himself was created by God, not corrupted yet, a perfect man. And he had no family. Guys, those who are dreaming to have a family. And he was so happy. I know you don't like that revelation. Let's go to the next. He didn't have any financial needs. No financial crisis. He was the happiest man on earth. He was not sick. He had, had nothing to do with the disease. He was still the happiest man. But he did, he did have a problem. What was his problem? He was alone. He was alone. And that's a problem. But somehow he missed it. He didn't know that it's a problem. Until one day, Almighty God told him, Adam, it's not good for you to be alone. Huh. That's my opinion. No, Adam, it's not your opinion. It's influence of the spiritual world. All you did, you accepted this opinion. Freedom of free will. And then you decide, you said, yeah, why not? And God gave you a wife. God gave you a spouse. And once again, you became the most, the happiest man in this world. You're happy, you're enjoying life, you're going around, you're having fun with your, wi with your wife. Everything is very, very good, very cool. You are good. You are happy. You are not miserable. One day, someone will tell you, you are miserable. Huh, what? That's my opinion. Look at the facts. Look at the circumstances. Look around. Yeah, you're miserable. Whose opinion was that? Devil came with an opinion, always under influence of someone, somebody, something. And often when we claim, it's my opinion, it's, that's what I think. Sorry, let me try to show you gently that often you are a product of someone's opinion. You are a product of someone's influence over you. 
And often, behind that product, a spiritual world stands. Light and darkness, God or devil. So then Eve, she comes and she talks to her husband. Adam, why don't you eat this? It is a forbidden fruit. Why not? Go ahead, eat it. Why? It's my opinion. I think it's good. Why not? Do it. Eve, is it really your opinion? You just adopted it. You accepted it. But it's not your opinion. The agenda behind it, it's much deeper. It's not your opinion. Who told you to do that? God. There is also another opinion. Don't touch. Don't eat. Don't do it. It's sinful. It will destroy you. You choose which opinion to adapt. And then you, are a, you become a product of someone's opinion. So often when we say, that's what I think, often you are drowning in your thoughts, negative thoughts, depressing thoughts, evil thoughts, offensive thoughts, thoughts of bitterness. You think these are your thoughts, they're not yours. You're a product of an opinion. Someone told you, you accept it, you swallowed it, and now you chew it, and you live with it. Day by day, you feel bad, it's not good. You were happy, everything was good. Someone came to you and told you, you're miserable. No, 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 I'm good, I'm okay, I'm a Christian, I'm a believer. Uh, it's not as bad, you know, I'm good. No, 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 you are miserable, look, look, look around. Look at other trees. Why can't you, you don't, you're not allowed to eat from this tree. What is this? Look at other trees, you know. They, he, me, I can eat from any tree I want in this garden. Look at other families. Look at other husbands. Look at other businessmen. They're successful. Look at other things, you know, like, I don't know, compare yourself. You are miserable. Really? Yeah, yeah, you are miserable. I never thought about it. Now think about it and accept it and go and live by it. Yeah, I thought it's, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. We live in a spiritual world that we often underestimate. That this spiritual world has a huge impact on us. Huge impact. Spiritual world is very real. Very real. Very real. Even though we don't see it, but it exists. And often people are miserable. Miserable. That's why we need God to break every stronghold. We need God to, to, who helps us, who can help us to be free completely. He is the one, Jesus, who can set us free from these strongholds. Because often we become a product of someone's influence over our life. Yes. Why Adam didn't see that he was miserable before? He realized that he was lonely. Some people, they believe they are miserable because they're lonely. Because they have buried their husband. Or they have never had a husband and they, are, they dream to be married one day. Or because they, I don't know, they are among people. They are surrounded by people but they feel so lonely even though, they are even though they are surrounded by people but inside. Misunderstood by everybody. Inside, miserable and lonely. You know what? Someone told them you are miserable. When you look at the facts, Adam was miserable as well. Adam was lonely as well, but he was not miserable. He was happy. Question, why? Perfect harmony with God. Harmony with God. When you are in harmony with God, when you are in relationship with God, you see things from different perspective. Facts are still there. Circumstances don't change. When you are in harmony with God, when you are in relationship with God, you see things, you live in a different dimension. You live in a different dimension. And then someone comes and tells you, hey, bro, you're miserable. Hey, by the way, you're lonely, you're miserable. Go, chew on it. Yeah, that's my opinion. No, 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 that's not your opinion. We'll get back to the thought. God gave us filters. God gave us weapons. God gave us strength. God did not create us to be miserable. No, 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 don't, don't go there. This is, it's not your thought. It's not your opinion. Don't go there, please. 
and then. So Adam, he was in perfect harmony with God. And he was happy. And, uh, but the Bible says that he was in fellowship. He, he, he had fellowship with God, the creator God, every day. So uh, have you ever thought, what did they fellowship about? Fellowship with God, we interpret it as prayer. So Adam, he, would, he was praying to God. Let me ask you, what was he praying about? Let's take a guess. Good health. Uh -uh. No, 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 he was perfectly healthy. <laughs> Don't forget. Don't forget. Perfectly healthy. This dude, this neighbor, you know, this, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. No neighbors. No neighbors. Okay, it's her fault. Uh -uh. No wife yet. Nobody to fight with. Okay, uh, finances. Mm -mm. Everything's provided. Okay. Oh, hold on. I have no needs. Exactly. Exactly. There's no needs. So what do you pray? What do you pray about? What do you do next? <laughs> uh, okay, Lord, so um, I had a need, but uh, I just, I, I, have, I have no need, so, uh, yeah. That's exactly what I call harmony with God. When you come to God, not because of your needs. Harmony with God when you come to God, not because of your needs. Harmony with God when you come to God, not because of your needs. Fellowship. You enjoy relationship. You enjoy His presence. When your kids come and, and they kiss you because they want 20 bucks from you. Or they, Dad, you know, can you please buy, uh, can you please, and they will kiss you three times. You know what's coming next. You need to buy them something. But when they just come and hug you just because they love you. Different level of relationship. That's why harmony with God is when we have relationship with Him. By the way, it says He had a regular relationship with Him. Daily, daily relationship, harmony with God without any needs. Even though we do have a right. We do have a right to ask. The Bible gives us this right. Come and ask and you will receive. God is full of mercy and love. Yes, we do have that right. But there is a different level. We can live and see the world in a different, from a different perspective. That's often what we don't understand. And once we understand this revelation that my mood, my thoughts, my behavior is a product of someone's influence, my mood, my thoughts, my behavior, it was because something influenced me. And often it's a spiritual world that stands behind this influence. Good or bad, lightness or dark, God or devil. But we deal with that on a regular basis. And I will try to show you more examples. For example, Job. A man who goes through sorrow and problems once again. He's sick, lost his kids, many funerals back to back, financial crisis. I think the worst thing can happen to any human being on earth. And here we go. Two opinions. Wife is talking. What is this? You're a Christian, you're a believer, you go to church, you believe in God who is full of mercy and love. You believe in this healing and miracles? What is this? No, this is all... Forget it. Forget it. Drop it. Go get drunk and fall asleep. Curse God. I'm not going to play this game. It's an opinion. Question, who is behind this opinion? Who is behind that thought? Another opinion. Stop. Keep in mind. Same circumstances. Very important. Same circumstances. Another opinion, Lord God, you are the one who gave. Blessed be your name. Lord God, why should we accept only good things from God and not the evil? If he said that, I believe he meditated on that before. He had this battle in his mind. He had this discussion, should I accept it or not? 
why is this happening who is this what is this why is this and then after this debate after this battle he had a choice what to accept and then he is saying my opinion blessed be his name i don't think it's his opinion guys i don't think it's job's opinion it is impossible for humans to be so miserable to bury one child after another your house is destroyed you lost finances all your savings are gone you are miserably sick they already sent you to the hospice and you're saying blessed be the lord no 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 it's not your opinion it's not your opinion you're a product of someone's opinion and praise god you have that option you praise god you have that option it's the power of holy spirit it's the influence of the holy spirit yes it's not your opinion so remember if you are drowning in your negative thoughts in your miserable thoughts if you see many people in fault if you are if you are just faking you, you either you fake it or make it you you're just existing you're not living yes because you have an opinion you have an explanation let me interrupt you it's not your opinion someone stands behind it but jesus can set you free in jesus name today you can be free you can have a different opinion and once again it's not yours you become a product of influence from heaven and that's the download from heaven once we receive this we can live circumstances will might remain the same but you will live in a different dimension that's the christian lifestyle live in a different dimension you're miserable no 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 no. that's not my opinion you're not miserable look at god harmony harmony with god brings happiness harmony with god brings happiness do you think job had enough problems why was he in harm harmony with god it's not only god what you can give me it's not only god give me this it's not only it's about god i still love you i still trust you that brings unexplainable peace that exceeds our understanding thoughts god gave us not just god didn't deliver us from misery he gave us all the tools so we can manage it with god's help romans 12 2 it says and do not be confirmed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind our responsibility that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of god so god gave us tools if he's challenging us to renew our minds to filter our thoughts before we say it's my opinion check it whose opinion is it who stands behind this opinion before you chew on your thoughts what if you say in the name of jesus no it's not my serpent go away i don't want to do that i don't want to think that way i don't want to stay miserable maybe we need to restore that harmony with god we need to renew our mind we have that filter in our mind and if we do have that filter and that option and that challenge from heaven then it means it's possible we failed many times i agree me too but it means it's possible god would be so unfair if he's asking us to do something that is impossible to do then it means it's possible there is hope there is a solution because we have god we know god so we can renew our mind why do we need this this process of renewing our mind to be transformed transformed where first of all in your thoughts that's where we are miserable first of all in our thoughts thoughts yes we dwell in our thoughts and he's and he's asking us to be transformed renewed in our thoughts by the word of god by the word of god not by the circumstances by the word of god when we stop thinking this way and we say lord god no what scripture can i remember right now whatever scripture you have memorized or you can open the scripture read the scripture proclaim the scripture the scripture brings life life and different totally different atmosphere and then why once again why do we need to deal with with your mind why do we need to renew our mind the question the, the the answer is very simple to understand spiritual world what did you say yes to understand spiritual world that's why you need to renew your mind because the end of this bible verse has the deepest revelation 
to understand and to discern is this God's will or am I captive in devil's thoughts that's the final goal renew your mind and always discern check examine is this God's will for me maybe I need to go through this maybe there's something I need to learn maybe there's something I don't understand it yes I agree but I trust you Lord God I choose to trust you Job he just chose to trust and that's what brings this relief even though circumstances didn't change right away but I choose Lord God your will your will it's all about his will that's why we need to renew our mind let me give you another very practical example how often we deal with spiritual world but we don't realize it and we become a product of it a product of it Matthew 16 verse 23 Jesus is speaking with Peter and he's telling Peter Peter get away from me Satan you are a dangerous trap to me you are seeing other translation says you are thinking things that are merely from a human point of view not from God's point of view what I think Peter had many conversations with Jesus but I think he remembered the most things this conversation he remembered the most before he was the great apostle Pyotr Ivanovich and here he became Satan <gasps> If it would be someone you know uh, from uh, if it would be a guy who would rebuke me like that <gasps> I don't know what would you do to <laughs> I don't know how would you react to that guy who just called you a Satan but it was Jesus oh oh Jesus oh Jesus hold on Jesus Jesus you meant I'm the hold on why what did I say I just shared my opinion exactly it's not your opinion that's exactly the problem it's not your opinion someone stands behind that opinion that's the problem Jesus gave us a, a perfect illustration illustration demonstration how the spiritual world works behind the scene the context of this passage is Jesus is about to go through suffering and Peter here he's the savior here he stands and he says no Lord don't do it no let's not do it no let's let's go the other way and Peter and Jesus is opening to all of us that's why it's easier for us easier for us yes it's easier for us because we look at the examples like Job like Hannah like Peter and Jesus is opening revealing to us much 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 more information that behind all these words and thoughts and uh, and uh, and ideas a spiritual world stands behind it so it was Peter who expressed the opinion but it was not Peter who was talking huh really yes really often guys I can share with my my personal ex my personal testimony often when there is a conference when there is like a service when there is a prayer when there is a challenge when there I'm when I'm fasting I remember my dad used to tell me these stories after stories always something will happen tension tension like pressure always like uh, especially like someone is destroying your peace like killing your peace and you're like no hold on you, you want to stop the world like God, God guys let's keep peace you know let's let's you know let's let's like and often I'm saying oh no devil you know devil again devil he's using devil he's abusing devil is destroying sometimes devil and often we can react no devil don't blame devil you, you blame you, you see devil in everything you, you see devil everywhere here we go I'm glad I'm not the only one who sees that Jesus he also th saw that and today it's just another to all of us another warning guys let's be careful we become a product of someone's influence whatever we speak we say all our thoughts that we meditate on you don't have to if it's destroying you if it makes you miserable if it kill kills peace joy gratefulness 
No, 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 it's not your opinion. Get away from me, Satan, in Jesus' name. Get away from me, Satan. Satan, if you're dealing with offense, bitterness, whatever misery you're going through right now, you can tell this in the spiritual round. In Jesus' name, get away from me. I want to be free. No, I choose a different route. No, I want to renew my mind. By his stripes, we are saved. We are healed. No, Lord God. No, Lord God, I believe in you. I trust you, Jesus. Yes, 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 we go through the same circumstances. But I have hope because I love you, Lord God. We're all, guys, we are all uh, are created. We have body, we have soul, and we have spirit. And you will never satisfy your soul and your spirit without God. It is impossible. You will always be miserable. You will always be lacking something. You will always be looking for something without God. It is impossible to satisfy your soul and your spirit. It's not because they, it's not because them, it's not because I'm not lucky, it's not because of... No, it's because it's someone's agenda behind this to destroy you. But you can live in a different dimension when you're in perfect harmony with God. Harmony with God, it's more than coming to church. Harmony with God, it's, no, it's more than just, you know, a, a three-minute prayer or like this routine that we're dealing with. Every single lady, wife, I'm sure, she dreams... I want to be loved. That's all I want. I want to be loved. If, if I can only be loved by my husband, I will be the happiest lady on earth. And that's what Hannah was dreaming about. And here we go. Stop. Pause. Attention on the screen. 1 Samuel 1.5. But Hannah, he would give her a double portion because he loved her. He loved her. It was not, it's not even my opinion. Not, not because Hannah, she judged, you know, was he a good enough husband? Could he do a little bit better? The word of God says so. I believe it's, a, it's legit. The word of God says he loved her. And she was miserable. Why? She was loved. Why was she miserable? You remember? We become a product of someone's opinion. We think that all I need is this. If it's only about, if it's on this level, as long as you get this, what you're after, you will always be in need of something else. Until one day you get in perfect harmony with God. And then you live life in a different dimension different dimension you see everything from different perspective when you're in harmony with God relationship with God a relationship with God that's what we are going after you know her husband he was trying to comfort her her husband told her you know don't cry why are you worrying don't worry don't feel sorry everything will be good everything will be all right she didn't hear all of these words Maybe she was even irritated by, this, by these words. Then other people probably from the side would tell her, it will be okay, don't worry, it will be okay, don't worry. Nothing worked, nothing worked. Until one day she came and the Bible says she poured out her heart before the Lord. And then the Bible says she went home and the Bible says she was not sad anymore. First Samuel 1.18 Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Anna, 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 come back, come back, why are you happy? Come back, Hannah, come back. Your problems are not solved, you are miserable. Oh, yeah, you're right, yeah, yeah, you know, it's good to know God, you know, it's good to pray to God, but my problems are not solved yet, you know. The Bible says she went away after this special prayer. When she poured out her heart and, she's, and, and the impact of the spiritual world, impact of the light in her mind, she went away joyful. Ding, but your problems are still there. Yes, but I live in a different dimension. I live in a different dimension. That's why I'm happy. 
oh Lord God I want this life I'm so miserable I'm so sick and tired of this life I have so many opinions now I I'm even confused where they come from yeah I have it that's why I have a good news for you you can be free today it is impossible to pour out your heart in three minutes pay attention the Bible says she pour out her soul her heart to who before the Lord can you imagine this deep conversation so you, you deep conversation I need to talk to you okay I want to pour out my heart but I have three minutes okay go ahead fast yeah makes sense right it's impossible to do it in three minutes that's what we do with God daily basis five minutes it's a good beginning but you are, when you are in deep relationship it's not about minutes it's not about agenda it's not about check mark it's about something much 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 deeper harmony harmony with God and when you pour out when you're pouring out your heart to God you can achieve such level of connection with God that even though your problems are still there but your your face is shining yes and you might say wait that's my opinion no 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 brother it's not your opinion it's the impact of the Holy Spirit it's the impact of light in your head influence of someone's opinion that is above above much greater than your problems much greater than your circumstances this is whose opinion it is so praise God for such hope such hope that we can have in God guys otherwise if we I would like to challenge all of you guys to learn learn to pour out your heart before the Lord otherwise you will always be miserable and you will seek for solutions yes it will be so hard that you will try to numb yourself yes you will try to numb that pain when you go to the dentist it's painful they numb you but you know it's <laughs> for a few hours then reality will come back that's how we live on our daily basis believers yes we know God yes we will hear pray here and there but we're numbing ourselves with other things we're numbing ourselves for example by uh, alcohol yeah we drink and sometimes it helps but it helps only for a few hours for a day and then reality comes back you need to drink again sometimes we numb ourselves by drugs sometimes we numb ourselves by Instagram we need to be filled with something because we're incomplete without God we have spirit we have self, we have the soul what do we do with it where do we go where do I bring it I was misunderstood everywhere what do I do with my spirit you are going seeking hungry after something you are not even know what you are going after but today you know that it's impossible to be filled and to be complete to be whole without God that's why we're going to him because otherwise you will you will keep numbing yourself with other things unless and until you find a real harmony with God different level of lifestyle praise be to our Lord living God Hannah she shared her feelings her emotions not with people it's okay to share it with your close people but often you will be once again misunderstood you will expect a different reaction often when you are when you when you carry something heavy and you are miserable when you share think about it share your emotions with someone you expect a reaction a reaction that you have in mind and if the reaction is different from what you had in mind you will become even more miserable that's why we need to learn how to pour out our heart our soul before our Lord God and that's what she did she didn't bring these emotions negative poisoning negative emotions to other people she brought it before the Lord she brought it before the Lord she brought it before the Lord and also by the way side side uh, note she didn't talk trash about that pastor she didn't post all over Facebook how badly they treated her minimum what I would do I would change the church don't you agree 
if a pastor would accuse you wrongly, if he would be so, <laughs> I don't know, so, um, so wrong, and uh, I think the minimum what you would do, you would share it with at least your circle of friends, family, um, Facebook, Facebook, Instagram, I don't know what, and uh, you would confirm your opinion that I knew these Christians, these believers. Is that your opinion? Now you know the answer. But if you keep, keep meditating on today's revelation, you will know all your thoughts, your mood, your actions, you're a product of someone's opinion. Spiritual world is real. And she didn't quit church. She didn't change the church. And she didn't say anything evil against the priest, even though he was so wrong. Do you think you would fire him? Let's vote. The problem is that she was in a different dimension. That's not a problem. That's a good thing. And then, often, we are, we stumble over people, Christians, in church. And Jesus, he mentioned John chapter 21. He said that, why are you looking at other people? Why are you looking at him? What do you have to do with him? And Jesus told him, what is that to do? What is that has to do to you? You, as far as concerning you, you follow me. But he's, uh, your, your guys are hypocrites. You know, he was doing business with me. He cheated me. And you know, he lied to me. And he says he's a Christian. And he goes to church. I will never go to the church. Do you think God approves their actions? Do you think God is happy because of their actions? God is grieving because these Christians, people who claim, who call themselves Christians, sometimes they lie, sometimes they sin, sometimes they abuse you, sometimes they accuse you, sometimes they, you stumble over them big time. You're already destroyed. You don't even want to see or hear anything about church. But remember, God has nothing to do with it. God has nothing to do with it. He never told them to do that. He never told him to go and offense you or hurt you. God, he's grieving. And church, think of it as, as like a hospital, a restor room of restoration where people come. They're broken. They're sick. They're miserable. Sometimes they're struggling. They're in, bond in bondage. Sometimes they're sinful and different kinds of people. We all come. To, why? Because we are all looking for help that comes from heaven, from God alone, not even from the priest, from God, from heaven, from him. We have hope in him, in Jesus. You can be free today in Jesus' name. And then Hannah, she, he, she kept her promise. She told, she told God, Lord God, if you give me a child, I will give it to you. I will dedicate him to you. She put spiritual, uh, she, she, I guess she rearranged her priorities. And she said, Lord God, I dedicate my kids to you first. They will belong to you. And here we go. Praise God for this wise husband. The, God, the husband, he reacted. You can read this in chapter 1 at home. He said, may, whatever you just said may become true. I support it. I bless it. Praise God he didn't say, you know what? Church, ministry, dedication, uh, holy. No, no, no. Let's, let, 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 let's, go, let's send our child to university first. Let him get a career first. And then, and then maybe, you know, and then we'll come to church. You know, we'll come to church. Don't worry about it. I know too many people who went to universities and never came back to church. I have a brother who went to university. I know the side effect of universities. That's why I already had so many parents who called me and told me, talk to my child, talk to my son, my daughter. Ask them to come to a Bible school. And the phone call was after they went through universities. That's why I challenge all young people and parents, send your kids to Bible schools first. They need to receive this spiritual foundation so we don't have to cry and fast afterwards for them because they're broken. So they are lost in this world. They don't even believe in this God. They don't even, they, they became atheists because of, because of someone's opinion, because of someone's impact on them. We need to give them foundation. That's why Hannah, she kept her promise. And she dedicated him to God because the Bible says, seek the kingdom of God first. Seek the kingdom of God first and then everything else will be given to you. And the last thing is this. When Hannah, she decided to dedicate her kids to, this, uh, to, the, to the temple, 
She found out this, miser this uh, very uh, bad news. The Bible says, 1 Samuel 2, 12, uh, the sons of Eli were corrupt people, scoundrels, bad people. And here we go. She has to release her son. He will be raised in such a great environment. Two boys who will, he will play with daily in the temple. What would you do? You know, God did, I, I promised, I know I promised, but you see, you, don't you see, don't you see the circumstances? You know, everything changes. Economy changes, you know, uh, people change, you know, everything changes. You know, Lord God, you know, I, I yeah, but I stepped on this path of, Lord God, I trust you. Obviously, sinful environment. We should watch who our kids are friends with. But here in this example, I want to show you complete trust to God all the way to the end. All the way to the end. Did, didn't she see, didn't she, do you think she didn't know about this problem? Oh, I think she, she, she did her research. Why was she above this harmony? Harmony, harmony with God. Harmony with God. It's not about circumstances. Harmony with God. That's where, that's the reason for the season. You're either miserable or happy. Remember, Adam, where are you? Where are you? Harmony is broken. Harmony is broken. Relationship is broken. Where are you? Why are you hiding? Well, you have facts, you have reasons. Yes, you have problems. <laughs> it's not because of facts. It's not because of problems. It's because harmony is broken. You downgraded. You were at this level. Now you went to this level. Yes, and you think you're miserable? <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, it's someone told you you are. <sighs> Last example. The Bible tells us to all the believers who are called to walk by the Spirit. For those who are not familiar with the Bible, you don't really understand what it means. It means that all our actions, thoughts, decisions, words, they have to be, they have to represent God, be inspired by God, influenced by God, in according with His will under influence of Holy Spirit. We are to walk by the Spirit. What it means to you that there is an option to walk in another direction. There's an option to live by different rules and policies. There is an option to have a different opinion and to live and stand by that opinion. You know, God, I'm not against your, uh, whatever you call it, live by the Spirit. I'm not against that. I respect, you know, God, respect. But, uh, you know, there is uh, this and this and this and her and him. Let me interrupt. Whose opinion is that? Let's keep talking. You're a product of someone's influence over you. That's why God is saying, be transformed. Transformed. It's not information. Transformation. Attention, guys, it's not information. Transformation. In your life today, it can be not about information, but transformation inside out. In your mind, in your spirit, in your soul, you can go home free, in peace. I would like to make an, an extend an invitation to someone who is here today who doesn't serve Lord yet, who doesn't know God, who doesn't believe in God, in Jesus Christ. Let me share with you the good news. The good news is this, that Jesus Christ, He came to this earth. He died on the cross for your sins, for my sins. Yes, some people don't give you a chance anymore, but He gives you another chance today.
if you come to him if you repent if you admit that you're a sinner and you need and you are in need of savior you can be forgiven today you will you will feel so light you will get a new purpose in life peace that exceeds your understanding peace that you cannot order on Amazon peace that comes from God you can be forgiven you can have eternal life and you can have access to this world and walk and live under the influence of Holy Spirit let's all stand I would like to give this opportunity for everyone who, who needs prayer to please come forward. If you would like to accept Jesus as your Savior today, you can come forward. We will pray for you. If you would like to, if you have any other need, physical need, spiritual need, if it's just, if you're miserable, you are just so miserable, misunderstood, looking for happiness, looking for reasons, looking for everything, and you're just tired, tired to carry these burdens. In the name of Jesus, you can be free today. You can be free today. Not because I said so, but because of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's alive. Lord God, guys this is such a good news such a good news that we have because we know Jesus because we have access to him please come forward move Holy Spirit he's the one who Jesus he's the one who sets us free I am asking you church now it's time to pray if you are, if you are a believer already start praying if you are not a believer meditate think about it may God give you boldness to come and accept his mercy and his help in Jesus name I would like to address those who are dealing with their thoughts often thoughts that are killing that are destroying that are like stealing all joy all peace you can be free you can be free in Jesus name in Jesus name hallelujah Lord God hallelujah Lord God hallelujah Lord God hallelujah Lord God Jesus Christ we pray 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 to you Lord God our living God hallelujah Jesus hallelujah my Lord my God hallelujah Lord church now it's time to pray it's time to pray time to pray for you to pray to your God hallelujah Lord let's focus on him maybe someone needs to hear this voice when God was calling Adam where are you why are you hiding don't show me your facts don't give me your reasons the harmony is gone relationship is gone yes I know my son my daughter you are miserable but it's not because of what you think there is another reason a deeper reason hallelujah Lord God hallelujah Lord God yes Jesus yes Jesus